for the next two pillars of uh, innovative models and distribution and uh, nurturing goodwill, I think uh, there's nobody better than Riaz on this panel who can address this, both because of the experience with Connect India in setting up a, a very different sort of a distribution model, and also his prior experience with basics where, you know, where customer goodwill is a very, com very, very integral component of the, of the business model. Riaz, could you please? When we conceptualized the idea of Connect India, it was just 18 months back. And it happened because two very stalwarts, one Vijay Mahajan and one Mr. L.R. Sridhar, who basically is the doyen of logistic industry. He's done everything from a cape-sized vessel to a small packet movement over the last 40 years. Met when they were 60 years old. And when people retire, these two guys decided to start a startup. And because I introduced both of them, I happened to get stuck in between them. And they asked me to kind of run this company. <coughs> the thought was never to service e-commerce. E-commerce is the only convenience so that I can deliver margins so that Avishkar is happy. But the thought is that there are millions and millions of producers across the country who are losing value for what they produce <coughs> because they cannot connect. They have market access problem. Our experience in it comes from the fact that five years working with Vijay Mahajan in microfinance, and I come from the financial services industry, distribution background. I worked for Aviva for a very long time. I worked with Vijay in developing the micro insurance product, which today is kind of, uh, you know, a five billion uh, business opportunity. But when I sold the first three policies to Vijay, I know what we started then. And I know what we are starting now, after 15 years, close to 15 years. So, when we gave loans of 15,000, 20,000 rupees to rural households and small households, we realized that a significant portion of that goes into consumption financing because the producer does not have motivation to produce. And the reason for that is, that for whatever his skills may be and whatever the product might fetch in the market, he only gets paid wage labors, rates. So when there are more and more microfinance and more supply of money in the market, they stop livelihood financing and they move towards consumption financing. It was from this thought that we started building Connect India. Our objective is to create 100,000, maybe today, I don't know whether there could be 100,000, outlets in the next three years across the country which is seamlessly linked through smart technology and through vans and motorcycles and cycles moving in tandem and doing business in a very simple, simple manner which is taking goods from one point to the other point and we are able to track and trace everything on a mobile phone. Now, what it would actually start doing is start creating a level playing field on something called logistic equity. It's not my word, it's the word of the petroleum minister who wanted to take gas cylinders to the hilly terrains in a logistically equitable way. And that's when I hit on this, that this equity is the most significant equity which could be a GDP multiplier in this country. Now, from there, we realized, and when we worked in rural markets, and we actually are not, not a rural focused company, we are a last mile distribution focused company. For us, creating one by one square kilometer delivery capacity in every metro city means as much as reaching out to as many rural villages as possible. And why do we do so? And how do we do? We do so because we believe that you don't deliver a product, you deliver happiness. And how do we do? We use the existing infrastructure of brick and mortar stores who are already delivering to your home or the existing infrastructure of government of India, of panchayats and the existing youth in India who is looking for employability to train them, 
to skill them and make them adopt technology. And as we go along, we believe that like to an Ola and an Uber, taxi drivers come like flocks to connect India, last mile distribution partners will come in flock. And the beauty is how you manage the money. And we manage the money the Suvida way, the wallet management way. And we give the money, we have the capacity to give money anywhere to anywhere in real time. And what it eventually does is, sir, in terms of marketing, and you said low cost marketing, what is seen is, is actually purchased. And I'll tell you one thing which one of my center owners in Punjab, rural Punjab said, Sir, jab bure bure tappe gaadi se utarenge, aur jab gaon mein delivery hogi, sir, to baaki bhi wo bure bure tappon ko dekhke, aur tappe manayegi ji. Ye kaam to hit hai, sir. Ye kaam to chalega. For those who don't understand Hindi, just translate this. When brown boxes are dropped by vans in villages, the others will see the brown boxes. And the others will call the bomb boxes. This is a great idea. This idea will not fail because everybody in the village will start calling in from all brown boxes. Ladies and gentlemen, we are in the business of developing small brown box commerce. And that business, we believe, is a game changer for a country like India, and not just India, for 5 billion people across the world. But the concept is not going to be limited only to India. It will go to Africa. Go to Indonesia, it will go to uh, Vietnam, it will go to Bangladesh. For if you build a very simple product with a very simple technology, people will just grab it, adopt it, and improve their livelihoods. And that's essential. If your business model impacts the community, then you should not worry about your balance sheet. Thank you so much, Riaz. And I really liked how you said, uh, in the business of delivering happiness and not products. Um, and, and, and for all of you, for all of your strategies, I think one of the, one of the important things that needs to fall in place for, for these strategies to actually convert to results is your foot soldiers, your field force, that are actually going to go out there and carry the seat horse and, and do the work. Um, and when it comes to that, uh, in our experience, we've seen the best design programs fall through because it's so incredibly difficult to hire people, train them, and then once they're trained, actually retain them when it comes to last man markets. Um, and there's a, there's a very uh, uh, interesting firm that has come up in India that's now trying to solve that problem. Uh, and I'll call, uh, call on Rishabh Khosla, the country head of uh, Shortlist, to talk to us a little bit about how his company is trying to solve this problem. This is going to be a bit of a segue, uh, but I promise I will connect. Um, and if I'm talking too long, please shut me up because I will be here for happy hour. Um, so I'm here to say that human capital is the challenge. Um, I don't need to tell the gentleman sitting here uh, that uh, building out uh, not just your field force, but the managerial level that manages that field force is probably one of the most critical things you can do to achieve the scale that, that we all want to achieve. Um, so I won't even say much more about that because it's axiomatic. There is a problem hiring, training, and retaining appropriate managers. Uh, and I'm talking all the way from the branch manager to the VP of regional distribution. Um, the other side of this is interesting as well, right? For the average job seeker in this market, it's a pretty terrible experience. Uh, if you don't have a connection, your best bet, if you're in an urban area at least, is to go on to Nokri.com, upload your CV, and basically shoot it out to everyone, and then you'll never hear back. And you'll never know why. Uh, and I can, again, I'm going <laughs> to go in many different directions here, but I believe that it comes uh, from the way people at the age of 16 are going to choose. Are you going to be an arts person, a commerce person, or an engineer? And it only gets more specific as you graduate from your uh, B-school or whatever further education, then you're an accountant, or a marketing person, or a business development person. Um, and people get pigeonholed, and there's just a massive, massive underutilization of this human capital. Um, so huge market failures on both sides, and what Shortlist is trying to do is begin to chip away at this 
what we believe is the problem of the next five to 10 years, which is actually helping these two sides of the market meet in an effective way. Uh, so we are building a platform that combines technology uh, and process to effectively source, screen, assess, and match these kinds of people with the right jobs, help people find their dream jobs. Um, and really the goal behind this is to pivot away from this very inefficient, time-consuming, and kind of opaque and inscrutable process around the CV. The CV doesn't mean anything. We've all read, and yesterday I was reading six-page CVs, seven-page CVs. The first page is really designed now for search engine opt optimization. All the keywords that you think you want to hear are going to be in there, but it doesn't really tell you anything about what this person does, uh, what they can do, and where they want to work, and why they want to work there. Um, so we are trying to, through technology and process, actually uncover the real capability, the real motivations of people. Uh, now I promise this, this will connect. <laughs> um, why am I actually here talking about uh, a very different topic from the last mile? And it's actually because I believe that there are a lot of connections here. One is obviously indirectly, um, if you can't manage the span of your field force uh, with these right managers and the right people, um, none of this matters. Uh, so there's an indirect angle here from where we are today. Um, but I also believe that for this model to work and for this problem to be solved, we really have to be able to engage with the last mile. This last mile of job seekers, the last mile of employers. Um, and there's, there's sort of two areas of opportunity as we see in here. One is in being able to find these types of people and engage them effectively. And the other is being able to actually uncover capability and assess them for suitability of the job. Um, so on the first part, um, there's digital and then there's not digital. Uh, and in terms of digital, I'm going to use all sorts of sexy words right now. Uh, we're using WhatsApp um, to try and get the word out there in a viral way about certain jobs. Um, we're building our entire app interface in a chat-like way, in a way that is familiar today to the average urban consumer and job seeker, um, but very soon will be entirely familiar uh, to a rural job seeker as well. Um, there's also all this great offline infrastructure, which all of you have mentioned. Um, India has 12 million points of sale. That is 50% of the points of sale around the world. Um, we have to use that. Uh, and if there's anything we've learned, whether it's a vocational training center or a Kirana, um, to be able to uh, get your service product out there, it has to be demanded. It has to serve a need. And the average person has to ask for it. They have to queue up for it. Um, so we have to design our services in a way that people are going to come to the Kirana and say, um, let me take the shortlist test here, or let me tell me what jobs are available with shortlist. Um, so there's one angle is just this engagement uh, uh, channel, digital and non-digital. Uh, the other huge opportunity is actually to begin to assess people through um, these new channels. Um, and, and actually new kinds of assessments. So we're developing a whole suite of um, voice-based assessments, psychometric tools, uh, capability uh, assessments, case studies, uh, that are all going to be deployed on mobile. Um, so if someone sitting on a bus going from this town to this town has some spare time, can take a few assessments, update their profile, and be matched even more, uh, even better for the right kind of jobs. Uh, and the second thing, I just want to talk about the softer side here, uh, and I promise I'm almost done. Um, the, the fit for the company's values, uh, the motivation that the person needs to have, has to match. Um, and for that, you really have to develop your assessments and your engagement tools in a way that uh, will result in a good match. So actually, we're, we're working with a lot of companies today, uh, including some in this room, um, looking at their existing field forces, their existing managerial layer, finding out what drives a good performer in those organizations, and developing assessments that start to predict that. Um, so again, we are just at the start of this. We've been around for six months, live uh, for even less time than that. Um, but we are thoroughly excited about, today we're, we're at a sort of mid-managerial layer. But very, very quickly, we hope to be able to tackle some of the real field force challenges and the last mile challenges um, in recruitment. Um, but I'll stop there. <laughs> Thank you, Rishabh, and stay with us. Before you started, I was actually 
So we were out of time. They need to combine the rooms. Before you started, I was actually going to ask you to conclude, and I think that's that's a great note to conclude on. I like that way of thinking about it, from uh, Sampal to Sambal, uh, Samriddhi and Santoshti. Uh, I want to quickly also let the audience know that uh, uh, Intelicap has just published a report on this uh, uh, subject, learning from actually many of the people who are sitting on the panel today, and we're thankful to them for sharing their insights. Uh, I encourage you to check it out. Also, the panelists are around, so please feel free to catch them after the panel. But thank you so much for being here today and enjoy what's left of the Sankar Forum. Thank you.